I've been using the X-Tool S1 laser for a couple of weeks now. While that doesn't make me an expert, it does make me a great beginner. I plan to make two videos about this laser. This video is called, What the Reviewers Don't Always Tell You. Subscribe to this channel if you want to be informed when part two comes out. And that video is going to be called, Are You Wasting Your Laser Making Tchotchkes? The X-Tool company gave me this laser, which is why I feel extra responsible to give you a completely honest review. Now, they don't tell me what to say, and in fact, they probably won't even like a lot of what I'm going to say in this video, but I plan to give you some important information that many other laser reviewers leave out in their video reviews. Now, I'm not saying these things to discourage you, but rather to inform you, which in turn helps you to make a better decision. Some of the things that I'm going to say today apply to all diode lasers, while other things are just specific to this S1. Most people start off their video reviews with the good stuff. I'm starting off with the bad stuff, so buckle up. I'm not going to drag this video out any longer than it needs to be. The first thing I want to say about diode lasers in general, lower your expectations. What I mean by that is that a lot of people buy these machines with the hopes of starting a small business and supplementing or replacing their current income. That's probably not going to happen. I don't want to burst your bubble, but the chances of you earning a regular income using one or more of these diode lasers is very, very small. Some people might get mad at me for saying that. What are you, an idiot? <laughs> just saying for I'm just being honest it's not impossible but it's definitely not easy a co2 laser well that might be a different story I don't have one so I can't speak to that but if you figure out the initial investment of your laser the cost of your materials the shipping costs the Etsy fees if you do shows all the costs associated with that are not cheap even smaller costs like electricity mistakes and wasted material all of your time these factors are working against you you would need to sell a ton of products just to break even. No matter how good you are at something, there's always about a million people better than you. Gotcha. Can't win, don't try. Then you're just making repetitious stuff and it's no longer enjoyable. For me, a laser is fun. It's cool. It's interesting and useful. I'm going to use this for a lot of things, but making a lot of money, that's not one of them. Another problem that you don't hear a lot about is that when you use a diode laser to cut wood, it leaves the edges looking like charcoal. I use this machine to cut half inch wood, which is great, but the edges literally look uneven like a piece of charcoal. And if you touch this, you're going to get that all over your hands as well. The only way to get rid of it is to sand it off. And it does give off an odor, which you have to seal or you're going to continue to have that smell. If you do want a clean cut piece of wood, just use a table saw, but understand that if you use one of these machines, the edges are going to look black. Another thing that you don't often hear in laser review videos is that these machines are fiddly. What I mean by that is that you're constantly fiddling around with the settings. More power, less power, more speed, less speed, more air pressure, less air pressure, different techniques to achieve the desired outcome. For example, when you're engraving or scoring wood, the outside edges of all your cuts often have this slight burnt halo effect. This can be really annoying and you have to take sandpaper to clean off those burnt edges. Now you can adjust the laser settings, air pressure and speed, things like that, but there's often burning still around the edges and it doesn't just wipe off like it does on acrylic. There are some ways that you can avoid or minimize this burnt edge syndrome. You can cover your project with blue painter's tape before engraving. Now that'll require just a little more power to cut through the additional layer of tape. And if you do this on a project that has a lot of detail, like this sign, you're going to need to pick out all those small cut pieces of tape, which can be quite tedious. But it does work. You can also try spray painting your project before you engrave, like I did on this sign. It came out better. There was a little bit of burning. Some of that wiped off, but I could still see just a little bit. The best thing that I found was to spray it with a clear acrylic first and then engrave. There was a slight residue which just wiped off. Now, this sign came out perfect. So this is why I say these machines are fiddly. You have to fiddle around with the laser settings to dial them in just right in order to get your project perfect. It is a good idea to make your own spreadsheet. Keep track of the settings that you use for each machine and each piece of material. 
There is one shortcoming with the X-Tool S1 laser. It doesn't have a built-in camera. Now the alignment system that you use on this machine to line up your image on the material is very accurate. Dare I say perfect. However, a camera would have been a nice touch, especially since you're gonna spend around $2,000 for this 40 watt laser. Now here's something kind of odd that I've never heard anybody mention. There's no handle here to move your laser head. When aligning the laser before you cut or engrave, you have to manually move this head around. Now I wish they put a handle here that you can grab. Several times I've knocked off this magnetic thickness adapter. It's not a big thing, but it seems kind of obvious to me. Another odd thing. The laser head doesn't move all the way to the left. Let me show you what I mean. This honeycomb cutting panel comes with the machine. When I slide it all the way to the right on the inside of the unit and I slide the laser head all the way to the left, I place my workpiece up against the edge guide on the left. The starting point for the laser is at least 5 eighths of an inch to the right. If I want to cut to the leftmost edge on my material, I need to slide it to the right where I don't have a perfect straight edge to line it up against. I just don't get why they designed it this way. Another thing about this laser is this plastic top. It scratches easily. Now it's not just this laser. I've noticed this on other lasers as well. So you got to be careful what you clean it with. You don't want to use a paper towel because that can scratch it. I just use one of these cloths that come with my eyeglasses and unfortunately one of these does not come with the machine. Here's a problem that you're going to have if you keep your laser in a separate room from your computer. Whenever I'm working on a project and I need to set the material thickness or the material size and then start the project, each of these steps requires me to go to the other room, make the adjustment on the laser, then go click a button on my computer. Sometimes I'm back and forth three times, four if I forget to close the lid, which this machine doesn't run if the lid is open. Now, I know these are precautionary steps, but it would be kind of nice to override some of them. I want to quickly talk about instructions, how to use your machine when you first get it. This thing comes with an instruction book, a user manual, but it's in 11 languages, which always confuses me to find the process to locate my language. Now, there are a lot of instructions and videos on the Xtool website. Obviously, there's a ton of YouTube videos from other creators that will help you get started, so be sure to check those out. Ventilation. Even though this machine is vented outside, the inside of the machine will smell a little when you open the lid after your project finishes. The ventilation fan continues to run for about 10 seconds after your project finishes. So this does help to exhaust some of the fumes, but there still is a slight smell when you open the lid. The ventilation on this machine is great, but it would have been nice if the X-Tool company or other laser companies for that matter provided you with a flange like this that you can mount on a board. I put the board in the window and now I can vent this directly out without opening the window and leaving a hose sticking out. You can also hook up this laser to an indoor fume extractor which works great but that's going to be an additional cost. Now, none of the issues that I've raised so far are showstoppers as far as I'm concerned, but they're good to know and hopefully these concerns will help you decide if you want a laser and which one to buy. Now, let's get into the good stuff. From the packaging, to the setup, to the hardware, to the software, this is an excellent machine. It is designed extremely well. From the hardware, which it uses exceptional quality materials, to the software, which is easy to use and very good. I haven't seen every diode laser out there, but I do know good quality when I see it. And this is great quality. The best thing about this laser is the enclosure. All of the fumes stay inside and then get vented out. Don't buy a laser unless it has a built-in enclosure. Now, I know you can always buy aftermarket enclosures and cases, but they're never going to be as good as one specifically designed for that laser. External cases can be bulky, ugly, and they just don't work as good. Man, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It may seem like I focus too much on the negative stuff with diode lasers. And that's absolutely true. I purposely did this, not to knock or discourage you from buying this or any other diode laser engraving machine. I did it because if I were spending one to two thousand dollars for a laser engraver, I would want to know exactly what I was and wasn't getting for my hard earned dollars. The advertisements and promotional videos don't always tell you what I told you in this video.
Now that I've gotten all the bad stuff out of the way, I want to concentrate on all of the good stuff in my next video called, Are You Wasting Your Laser Making Tchotchkes? It's going to focus on a lot of cool stuff that I made using the X-Tool S1 40 watt diode laser. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell and you'll know when my tchotchke video is uploaded. I'm also going to have a giveaway in that video, so stay tuned. I'm Tom, this is Allie Picked, and thanks for watching.